What's up everyone? Uh, my name is John Willis and those of you that have watched my videos before will know that I normally do sort of a walk around hands-on sort of video uh, but this video is a little bit different as you can see you can now see my face so what is this video? Well this video is all about the Monimoto uh, motorcycle tracker okay and uh, it is retailing at about £149 and the idea with it is is that you can have a tracker that will alert you if your bike is moved or moved without the keys more importantly or without the key fob they give you and crucially um, allows you to track the movement of it if it does get taken so that's the idea comes in a really neat package that looks like this okay and uh, you can hopefully see uh, that that is the branding uh, it comes in a really nice uh, very compact box and that gives you an idea of how small this unit is. Um, I'm going to start off by talking about some of the advantages of this unit. This unit um, is very small but not only is it very small it also doesn't need wiring into the motorcycle or scooter battery. That makes a huge difference because you don't need to keep your battery charged especially during the winter or when you're not riding it. So that's going to make a huge difference. So there is an accompanying app on your phone that you use um, to keep track of it uh, and that app um, is just as you'd expect in the app store um, and it is uh, Monimoto okay and uh, I've already gone ahead and downloaded it and verified my phone number and stuff like that but basically <coughs> once I've downloaded it the instructions in the app tell me to do this so hopefully the camera picks this up but it basically says that I need to follow through some simple instructions to get this thing up and running so it says open up the Monimoto, but presumably to do that, I need to unbox it. So let's have a quick look. So lid comes off, just cardboard tube. So let's put that to one side. Uh, here we have, I think, some reusable zip ties. Yep, perfect. So they're really, really handy. So these uh, reusable zip ties mean that you don't have to constantly use zip ties if you move it from vehicle to vehicle, uh, which is really handy. Uh, a little piece of cardboard. Uh, which just tells us uh, that you can download the Monimoto app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. And this is the key. So this is the fob that tells the Monimoto that you are close to your bike, in other words, uh, to disarm it effectively as you go through. Right, let's have a look. What else have we got? Okay, so that is the tracker itself so very very small and compact for comparison that is a mobile phone so it's about the height of most modern mobile phones so <coughs> very compact uh, what else do we have for well, the obligatory manuals which hopefully i won't need that's why i will leave them there for now and i think that's it yeah that's pretty much it um bit of information on the bottom of the box it just says um that you've got a serial number and it also tells you that it takes inside this CR123A batteries. It takes two of them. They're like big lithium camera batteries, really. Um, for those of you who can remember film cameras, they're similar to that. So um, the instructions to go with this, uh, I think, are basically fairly self-explanatory. So we'll have a quick glance and see if we can't work out what's going on. Uh, here, so let's have a quick read through um, in their quick start instructions. So it says to download the uh, app, which I have done. Uh, then it says to open uh, the Monimoto itself. So let's have a look, see if we can't get this open. So it is a very tight fit, presumably, to stop any water getting in. There we go. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we can see that, but there is a battery tab, and those are the lithium batteries that are in there. Now, my SIM card that is in here, I went with the one that's with it. So in terms of pricing, this comes in at 149.99. Uh, that gives you a 2G SIM card, which works all the way throughout Europe, um, so that includes the UK. If you want to go worldwide, you'll need the 3G SIM card. Um, and that's about an extra £30. Uh, the first 12 months were included on my offer. So I got 12 months uh, subscription 
uh, to the SIM card for free. It's not really free, is it? I've paid for it, but it was an offer. Uh, normally, I think you get the first month or three months free, and after that, it's about three pounds a month. So, yeah, good peace of mind. Good, uh, so, a little nickname within there. You choose a profile. You say whether you want it to be a motorcycle or a car. So I'm going to pick motorbike. And it's going to ask for my phone's permission to access my location. So I'm going to say just whilst I'm using the app. Um, and it says check the serial number. So check the serial number on the device to make sure that I am connecting to the right device. Okay, so uh, mine ends in A2 and this one ends in A2. So that's perfect. I'm going to say add. So now it's bonding is what it's saying. Oh, okay. So first thing it said is there is a firmware update available. So I'm going to update now and it's starting my firmware update. <clears throat> so this is going to be in real time. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to change any of the speeds. So this will give you an idea of how long it's taking. Uh, so let's see. And basically the quick start instructions, it's already uploading it to the device. The quick start instructions are that. So basically it says that once I've gone through, I locate it on the bike and basically that's it. It's ready to go. So uh, hopefully it should be just a case of working our way through uh, and seeing how we get on. So it is updating the firmware on this device right now. And let's see how we get on. So basically the way this works, okay, is you have this device which is the one, <coughs> the one that actually goes on the bike. And then this key, um, if it is close to this, but this device, it disarms it. Okay. So you can see that the, occasionally the red light will flash, uh, on this little key fob and on here. Um, so it disarms it. If this is more than about 20 meters away and the bike moves with this in it, it will set off, uh, like an alert. And if it continues to move, and this fob is not near the bike, then it will go into an alarm state. And what's nice is it actually sends you updates via the app. And if the app can't be reached for whatever reason, so it can't reach uh, sort of push notifications, then it will revert to text messages uh, with a link to the map where you can see where your bike was. And having looked at a few examples of this online, I can see there's a few people that have had bikes recovered from this. Um, so that's reassuring. Uh, if nothing else, it probably won't stop it being stolen because they won't know it's there, but hopefully it means that you can get it recovered if you need to. <coughs> so we're at about two minutes and now um, it's saying uh, there was a GAT error, whatever that is. So I'm going to retry and let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to keep it as close as possible to all three devices to see how we get on. Uh, don't know what a GATT error is, but that's what it was complaining of. Let's just have a quick read of the instructions. I know a lot of them are no doubt not in English. So let's have a look, there's EN. So for a full thing, yeah, so basically the vast majority of these basically just tell you that these aren't the full instructions. So they just tell you in about seven different languages that if you want the full instructions, you can use the app or you can go onto their website. So let's have a look. So it is trying to do the firmware update again now. Uh, it's updating according to the, the status, but we shall see. Um, it's worth pointing out that my Bluetooth is on it, on my phone um, and uh, everything is super close. So hopefully that helps as well, uh, but we will see. And this is why I wanted to do this video because this gives you real world expectations. Um, there is a button uh, inside here, which I think is a strong likelihood that that is a reset button. So if, uh, if all else fails, uh, I'll hit the button and then we'll try again, but hopefully it'll go through. Uh, one thing I would say feedback wise um, is at the moment, I don't know if you can see that, but at the moment it says just updating. Um, it doesn't really give you an indication as to how far it's got and even the status at the top, if I show you that, uh, it just says updating. Okay, so I've got another error where it says um, basically the firmware has failed. So uh, let's just um, have a look and see if we can skip for now and see if it'll just allow me to set it up uh, without it. If it won't work for whatever reason, then we'll have to have a look and think about why it's not working. So it could be that the batteries have been in it and because I didn't immediately set it up when I pulled the tab, maybe that's why it can't connect to it. That is entirely possible. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to just close the app and we're going to go and uh, just have a, a little reboot of the device by taking the batteries out. Let's uh, give it a go. There we go. Okay, so for anybody that's interested, those are like the, the batteries that it uses. They're lithium CR123As, just three volts. So we're going to pop those in and we've got a red light that flashes on the front of it when I first put it on and uh, hopefully let's have a look now see if we can get any more progress I'm hoping so so let's go there let's go there okay and we do want that one connecting so obviously at the moment this has not been connected to a phone or a device and if it still doesn't work uh, then I'm going to have to do some further reading and come back to you on the video because as far as I'm concerned it should just plug and play, it should work but at the moment not as smooth sailing as the quick start guide would lead you to believe what I will say is that red light on this um, remote hasn't been flashing so I don't know if that's anything to do with it uh, something went wrong, Monimoto disconnected. Please try again. Right, let's have another go. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, this is one of those things where you don't always you don't always get what you think it's going to be, but let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay, so I'm hoping that now we've got our little flashing light. And I'm hoping that we are going to see if we've got that. Remove the LED will blink, firmly close. Yep, yeah, okay, so let's give it a name. Okay, motorcycle. So check the serial number to make sure it matches that one, which it does. Still not getting any flashing lights at the moment, but hopefully that won't necessarily be a problem. So let's say it's trying to connect to it again now. Let's have a look, see if we get any more joy. This is my first time ever using one of these trackers. I am very tech savvy generally. Um, rebuilt networks and PCs and all sorts of stuff, but um, yeah, this is ultimately just like a Bluetooth device, so it should really be fairly straightforward. Something went wrong. So first impressions of getting it going are not great, if I'm honest. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna pause the video and I'm gonna come back to you once I've done a full reset on this and a full reset on this and then we're going to try and see if we can get it set up again. Back in five. Right then, uh, after much faffing around, I ended up taking the batteries out for three minutes. Uh, I also cleared the cache and I cleared the storage on the app. So let's see. Okay, so uh, one of the things they suggested was turning the Bluetooth on and off on my phone, which I've done. Um, I've also... Um, check to see if this device can be seen in my device's Bluetooth list, and it could. So now I'm hoping that it will connect. So let's see what happens. So it's saying connecting. It was listed as a device in my Bluetooth list just. So I'm hoping that this can now be seen. I even tried taking out and reinserting the battery in this to see if that would help. Uh, but at the minute, I have to say, the out-of-the-box user experience is pretty crap. Uh, I haven't been very impressed. The other problem is, is the support documentation says that to reset this, something went wrong, most mini moto dis disconnected, says that there should be a USB socket just here, a micro USB that you plug in without the batteries in to do a reset of the device. However, I would say that that um, port has now been replaced by this little button uh, that you have here. And the issue is, is that none of the documentation has been updated. So they keep telling you that you should hold the button in 
and allow it to flash. So you can see here, flash, flash, flash. It'll do one more flash, flash, and then nothing. So I'm assuming that now means that it's reset. When I let it go, it'll do one red flash, uh, and then it'll go green. There we go. So green to me would indicate that we're all good. Um, so I'm going to try and connect again and see what happens. It is frustrating because it should be relatively simple. All I'm doing is pairing a Bluetooth device. You know, it's a standard Android build. If anything, it's less customized than Samsung's and stuff like that. I'm using an Android One device, as vanilla as you can get when it comes to Android. So it's still trying to connect. Um, and it's not working. So I'm just going to have a look to see if it shows up. So it does show up in my list of devices um, in my uh, Bluetooth list. Um, and it's trying to pair from my settings app now to see if that works. But I'm not entirely convinced it is going to work. I don't know if it's because it failed halfway through the firmware update in the app which is a bit crap if that is the case. And there's no way of doing a firmware update without the micro USB port on this now because effectively what they've done by doing away with the micro USB port is they've done away with the ability for me to connect this to a computer. So that is interesting. Okay, so what have we got? So it's definitely that one. Okay, let's try. So check, it's check the registration and it knows that the registration of this device exists. And now it's trying to connect. And this has got a serial number, this key. And so has this. And the serial number is, uh, is on this label just here. And it does match. So it knows that it exists. And there's no way that they'd know that without knowing that this was physically here. Something went wrong. Try again. So it's either just really, really flaky, in which case it do, I don't hold out much hope for it not triggering alarms constantly, or it just doesn't work. It's a bit crap, really. I'm not overly impressed so far. So I'm hoping, hoping that it will actually connect at some point. But since the first time that I loaded the app, it hasn't connected again, and it only got halfway through, and it just failed to connect. And I don't understand why. And it's incredibly frustrating. I've tried leaving the batteries out for three minutes, like they suggest, to allow it to completely drain and reset. And it still hasn't worked. The only thing I can think is that these batteries are flat. I mean, I am questioning why I need to do a firmware update on a brand new device. So Minimoto, if you are listening, that is crap. Okay, I should not have to, um, replace batteries on a device that's brand new. I just shouldn't. Um, and it's still refusing to connect. So I get the feeling that this may very well uh, actually be dead and not working. And I know that the LEDs are flashing, but the LEDs take so little power that I don't think they're, they're really doing anything. Um, and if that is the case, um, yeah, I, I just think that's a bit crap. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. What I might try and do, because I can't be asked to go through the hassle of returning it needlessly, um, I might try and go and get some of these batteries. I uh, don't know where I'll sell them, really. It's a Saturday evening, so who knows. Um, but it might be worth me trying to go and see if I can get um, a couple of these uh, lithium batteries. And then coming back to you. Um, but... Yeah, like I say, for now, overall impressions are not good so far. Um, really not very impressed. Um, ultimately, the hardware of this device, if I can actually squeeze it out, looks like this. It's very simple. There's a GPS chip on the end. One, one capacitor, really, in the middle. A little bit of a circuit board, but that is basically it. So what looks like a very complex piece of hardware really just isn't to be honest um it goes in one way it is keyed like that so locks in um these are the bits where you put the cable ties through so I don't know if you can see that there so just at that end and there's one on uh this end as well i think yeah just there so but yeah it's frustrating because 
I don't know why it isn't working. Uh, it's it's incredibly frustrating, actually, to be honest, um, because it should just work. Um, and if it is the batteries, well, if it's if it's the if it's the batteries, Moni Moto, then you should be ashamed of yourselves because this is not a cheap device, really, in the grand scheme of things. So if you can't even be bothered to ship with two decent batteries. That's bad. So stay tuned. I'm going to get some new batteries and I'll be back. Okay, uh, so it's the following day. Uh, I had quite a lot of issues initially setting up the uh, the tracker. Uh, eventually, eventually, I did manage to get it to set up. Um, I did, because of how many problems I was having, actually log a support ticket via email with um, Monimoto. What's really reassuring is they came back to me within about six hours to give me some troubleshooting um, <clears throat> advice and feedback and really um, just kind of gave me a bit of reassurance that there was a real human at the other end. Um, interestingly, the uh, one thing that they did say, which would be useful for people to know, was that they did say that uh, although there is no micro USB port anymore on the device, there is now um, the uh, little button. So if you take your batteries out and leave them out for three minutes and press and hold the button, um, then what it will do is if you press and hold the button and put the batteries in, wait two seconds and then release the button, uh, what it should do is it should go into like um, what's called DFU mode or device firmware update, I think that probably means. Um, but what that basically means uh, is you can force a firmware update via the app. So that's quite useful to know anyway. Um, and I sent the email at, uh, let's have a look, at 10 o'clock at night and at um, 9 a.m. the following morning, they'd replied back. So that's pretty good really, to be honest. Um, and apparently the GATT or GAT error is just a simple Bluetooth protocol error. So that's where uh, the device just won't, for whatever reason, communicate with um, your phone or with the device. So what they recommend is just powering it on and off and powering your Bluetooth on and off on your phone or restarting your phone and then trying it again. Um, how I actually got it working was by disconnecting the device powering it all off, uninstalling the app again, making sure that the cache and the storage and everything was cleared on the app. And then I went again for about a fourth time and then it did connect. And to be fair, since it's connected, it's been absolutely faultless. Um, and just to give you um, a bit of an idea, I did sort of um, take it away and try to see if I could trigger the alarm. So basically I um, left the key um, at home and just went for a walk with the little um, Monimoto. And what you'll see, uh, hopefully here, is you'll see that uh, it said it was ready on a few occasions uh, when I kept powering it on and off just to check that it was picking it up. Uh, and then uh, finally it, I triggered an alarm state. Uh, and then you will uh, probably have noticed at the top there that it then said, Monimoto key found back into ready mode. So in other words, it went from an alarm state when I got a phone call. So that's one thing that I didn't realize it did. I thought it just sent push notifications, but the minute it went into alarm, my phone went off. And it wasn't just a text, it was an actual phone call. So I'm much less likely to miss a phone call than I am a text message or a push notification. So that's good. Literally, if you answer the phone call, it just hangs up, but then sends you a text message and a push notification if needs be. Um, telling you that something was wrong. So overall, I'm actually quite impressed. That said, the setup was nowhere near as simple as perhaps it makes out in the manual. Now that could just be my phone, um, but like I say, I'm running a, a Nokia 8.1. It's running Android 10 uh, with the latest security patch on it. Um, so I'm not entirely convinced that it's the phone that's the problem. I think it's more likely to be the Monimoto hardware that's a little bit flaky.
But to be honest, for £149, and the offer that I got meant that I get a year's subscription as well, so that's like worth uh, about £36. So realistically, for 120 quid, I've had a tracker that means that hopefully, if I need to, I can get my bike back, or at least try and recover it if it ever gets stolen. Um, so overall, definitely recommended. It's really small, it's really easy to hide in your bike, um, somewhere discreet. Uh, I love the fact uh, that they use reusable cable ties. I think that's, that's brilliant, because if ever you need to move it from, say, a bike to a car, and you want to track um, a car or you know, a, even a push bike or whatever, if you wanted to track movement and make sure that it wasn't stolen, it's, it's a really good feature to have. So yeah, overall, pretty recommended. Um, again, I'll put all the links to where you can buy them uh, in the UK particularly. Um, shipping was fast, um, payment was easy using PayPal, all really, really straightforward. So yeah, if you've got any questions, or you want me to do a follow-up video or anything like that, then please do obviously uh, get in touch in the comments below. Make sure you like the videos and obviously subscribe because that really helps me know that what I'm doing is really, really useful to you guys. So until next time, bye for now.